This is the Alberta Legislature in Edmonton. Come to Alberta, they told everybody. Come here, take advantage of the Alberta advantage. Alberta is now the fastest growing province. So come on over here and join the bandwagon. What could possibly go wrong? Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is George Schlackig. The one, the one only. Today I'd like to talk about an increasing trend here in Canada. More and more people are moving to Alberta from all across the country, making it one of the fastest growing places, not just in Canada, but the world. According to statistics, Alberta's population is about 4.7 million right now, with a year-over-year -year growth rate of about 4%. I live in Alberta and really like it here, at least for about eight months of the year. <laughs> More on that later. Like so many newcomers today, I also moved here from another province, pretty much with just a couple of bags, not knowing whether it was going to be just a brief visit or a more permanent thing. That was in early May of 2010. When I got on the plane in Toronto, Ontario, Spring was in full swing. Everything was green and the weather was getting nicer by the day. Hours later, I got off in Edmonton and it was a winter wonderland. A freak snowstorm, my friend reassured me. It had been 20 Celsius already, but suddenly winter was back. Since everything was white, I had no way of knowing if there was any green under the five inches of snow. So... I had to take her word for it. But at that moment, I wanted to go back to Ontario. Yep. Alberta has characteristics and challenges that are unique, even within Canada. I've identified five things that are particularly tough about this province. To some, they may not seem like a big deal. For others, they may be deal breakers. <laughs> Number one challenge is the extreme weather variability. <laughs> Alberta experiences a wide range of weather conditions throughout the year. Winters can be extremely cold with heavy snowfall, especially in the northern regions. You might be thinking, this is Canada and it gets cold in the winter. Yes, indeed, cold winters are common in most of Canada. But if you're coming from a place where minus 30 Celsius wind chills are a big deal a couple of times a season, with minus single digit highs for much of the time, then you'll be in for a surprise. We get brisk north winds that often last up to two weeks and keep temperatures well below minus 30 Celsius for prolonged periods. This isn't wind chill. That can actually hit minus 45 or worse, depending on how hard it's blowing. I'll be honest, for the most part, I don't enjoy winter in Alberta. First snow usually falls in November. Edmonton does not clear residential streets, so this stuff stays around in various forms until April, because it never goes above freezing for long enough to melt it. Summer comes late here, after a spring with wildly fluctuating weather and temperature scenarios. We're used to sleet and even snow for the late May long weekend, which usually marks the beginning of the real summer season. That can be hot and dry with wildfires and droughts. Wildfire smoke is nasty. But there are also summer storms here in Edmonton. July is actually the month with the most rain. Want to still move here? Better be prepared for extremes. Adapt your wardrobe and lifestyle accordingly. And yes, it can snow here at any time, especially closer to those beautiful Rocky Mountains.
problem number two. Alberta's economy is heavily dependent on oil and gas. Over the years, there are cycles of what we call boom and bust. The job market can go from extremely good to very volatile within a short time following global energy prices. Oil companies are profitable when the price of a barrel is closer to $100, but they're losing a ton of money when it's down to 30 Even negative oil prices are not unheard of anymore. There goes your employment opportunity. Third, I have to mention cultural diversity. While Alberta is culturally diverse, it may not be as cosmopolitan as some major cities in other provinces or countries. If you're coming from cities like Vancouver or Toronto, you might find Edmonton to be more like a small town, despite its huge area and well over a million population. However, Edmonton and Calgary are by far the most culturally diverse places in Alberta. In smaller towns and rural areas, it's different. There will be far fewer amenities catering to specific ethnic communities. I've lived in the small town of Lac La Biche for a couple of years and experienced this. While there's a large native population there, the town seems to be controlled by a council of Lebanese heritage with very little influence from other cultures. This can be a challenge for newcomers seeking familiar cultural experiences. Problem number four. Healthcare sucks in Alberta and it can get expensive. Yes, Alberta has public health care, but newcomers from countries with universal health care may be surprised by the additional costs associated with health care in Alberta. You may need private insurance to cover certain medical services and medications that were covered where you came from. Make sure you get all your dental work up to date before moving here. <laughs> Unless you've got extensive coverage, dentists can be unaffordable in Alberta. Ah. Since living here, practically all my dentist visits have been in Mexico, where I can pay out of pocket without breaking the bank. My wife, Barbara, has dental coverage through Indian Affairs, but it often falls short. If you're in a small town, the poor health care can quickly turn into a matter of life and death. We recently lost a dear friend whose death might have been prevented if proper care or even an ambulance to Edmonton had been available. The ambulance took eight hours to arrive. Our friend passed away before ever receiving any treatment. The Alberta government has been subsidizing the energy sector to the tune of billions. But they've cut the healthcare system to the point where it no longer functions and people die as a direct result. Number five, distance and isolation. Alberta is a vast province with many remote and isolated areas. Depending on where you live, you may find yourself far from major urban centers, which can impact access to services, healthcare facilities, and cultural events. Long distances between towns and cities mean longer travel times and transportation costs. Perhaps you were used to making the occasional trip across the border to the United States. Well, unless you're living in southern Alberta, you probably won't do too many of those. Edmonton is over 500 kilometers from the U.S. border, and the closest state is Montana, which is sparsely populated with no major metropolis close to the border. Number 6. Alberta is the car theft capital of Canada. I found this out firsthand. My pickup truck disappeared from our property and hasn't been seen for a year now. The police 
was less than helpful in trying to recover it. It was actually a real runaround to even try to report the theft. You're expected to do so via a telephone service that has you listening to and selecting options from a huge menu of irrelevant BS. Even after I found a part of my truck myself a few days after the theft, the police didn't even make an attempt to follow up on that. It was a huge disappointment. Police is inadequate. While Alberta offers many opportunities and a high standard of living, it's far from perfect. I've given you only six of the most severe problems we face here in the province. But there are probably some more that I'm not even aware of anymore having lived here for well over a decade. Are you a more recent newcomer to Alberta? Please share your insights in the comment section. If you're planning a move to our province, you may as well be informed about the challenges that you'll be faced with. Being prepared and informed can help you adapt better to the new environment. I hope you found this video useful. Please give me a thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. And I'll see you soon.